Hello, in this video I'm going to show you the most incredible tool that you can have as a landscape photographer if you're interested in taking amazing photographs with the Sun, the Moon or the Milky Way. And all the hardware you need for it is probably already in your pocket. I'm talking about a mobile app that can help you plan and predict the positions of those celestial objects with extreme precision. Have you ever seen one of those images online where the Moon is perfectly positioned against the Big Ben or some other iconic building? Well. The photographer didn't just get lucky, it's most likely a product of meticulous planning. And if you want to know how to do it yourself, don't stop watching the video. Up until recently, I've been actually doing all of my plannings on my laptop. And if you'd rather do it on the desktop, I'm going to leave a link right here to my previous video when I showed how to do it on the laptop and also how to edit the photo afterwards and basically the entire workflow. So I can highly recommend this video. But now I actually think that being able to do it on your mobile phone is far more superior because you can take your phone with you to the location when you go out for a shoot. You can adjust your position if the clouds come by and you have to wait a little bit or something unexpected happens. Okay, so the app is called Planet. It's available for both iOS and Android. It currently costs about $9.99 US dollars, if I'm not mistaken, and it's a very fair price for the amount of features that this app have. And in fact, there are so many features in this app that this video is just going to be a superficial overview of the most interesting parts. But Planet actually has its own YouTube channel with a lot of in-depth tutorials. And I'm going to put the link to this channel down below in the description box of this video. So if you want to learn more, you can refer to those videos. So let's actually open the app. And here on the main screen, you can see we have a map. We have some lines that depict uh, the azimuths of sunrise, moonrise, sunset and moonset and we can actually pan around. We, we can see our current location here and down below we have a timeline and if I pan left and right you can see the positions of the moon and sun are changing. Here at the top we have our ephemeris and if we scroll down from it we can see we have a lot of features to choose from. We have rise and set, we have twilights, we have special hours like golden hour, blue hour, we have star trails, we have milky way, we have eclipses, we have even rainbow position, cloud distance and tide height. There are a lot of features here and like I said, I'm just going to do a brief overview. So let's actually cancel and leave it at rise and set. And down here is a secondary mode and if we scroll down from here, we can see we have coordinates and elevation, distance and view, focal length, depth of field, panorama and aerial photography. So by default we are in coordinates and we can see our latitude, longitude and also if we tap here, we have our elevation. But if we change the mode to distance and view, I can actually move around here and we can see in this box the azimuth, the distance and the elevation gain between our position and the position we are looking at currently. But the most interesting for me is actually focal length because now the green cone actually depicts your field of view. I can change it and you can see that our focal length is currently 18 millimeter. Let's change it to 11. And by the way, this focal length actually takes into consideration your crop factor. So if you're on APS-C camera or micro four thirds, you can set it in the settings of the app and you can just use those focal lengths here. You don't have to do all the calculations into full frame in your head. So that's pretty convenient. We can move this around like this. We can also grab the edge of this cone and change it. You can see that the focal length is actually updating as we move it right here. Also, another interesting feature is the depth of field. We can set our aperture here. Again, the smaller the aperture, the more depth of field we have. And the larger the aperture, which means smaller f-stop number, the smaller depth of field we have. And this is particularly important if you're trying to photograph, for instance, the moon with some foreground object, because you want to have both in focus. So you want to be far behind the foreground enough that both the foreground and the moon are in focus. That way you can avoid focus stacking, and basically we have much easier workflow in post-production. We also have aerial photography, so if you are interested into photographing with your drone, you can actually go into aerial photography and now I have my Mavic 2 Pro set here and I can basically move that around and I can see that at 290 meters above, by the way, you can change meters to feet in the settings, of course, what the drone will see if the tilt angle is zero. If you swipe down with two fingers or up, you can actually change the tilt angle and that way you can frame your drone shot right within that app. Amazing, right? 
So let's actually try to set up a lunar alignment with Moonrise with the monastery that we have right here. So let's go to the focal length mode. Let's reset the tilt to zero. And we want to adjust our timeline so that we are aligned with the moon rise here. This is the gray line right here. And the monastery is right here. So we can actually zoom in and set our scene location right here. This is the red landscape marker. And this marker will stay in place. We can actually move around and this marker stays in our target. Also, we can set up custom markers. And if you see here, I have a marker on the right tower right here. And let's do the same for the left tower. You can see in a moment why having those additional markers is super powerful. So bear with me. Align the map with the second tower and hit plus add marker. We're going to name it tower left. Uh, terrain, it's actually a building tower. The height of it is 300 meters with 8 meters and height above ground 50 meters. The height is above sea level. Let's check it. Unfortunately, when it comes to those heights, you have to find it out somewhere else and input it into the app. So you have to look it up. The building you're trying to photograph, if it's a, if it's a famous building, like, I don't know, the Empire State Building, you will have no problem finding this information online. So let's actually add this marker. And we can see we have both markers here on both towers. So let's zoom out. And now at our current location, we have this camera marker and we can actually tap and hold to move that. And what we want to do is we want to align the moon rise with this line that connects both markers, the camera marker and the location marker together. So let's actually move back a little bit and we're going to position it somewhere here, for instance. And now what we can do this is really interesting. We can actually go here and open the viewfinder VR mode. Yeah, we're going to change the orientation to landscape, of course. And now we can zoom in and we can see our both towers. The tower markers are represented by those rectangles here on this map. And using that, we can precisely align those towers with the moon in the way that we want to. So if we move this timeline, we can see that the moon is actually changing its position. So somewhere right here is at the correct height, but we need to adjust our position. So go back and we actually need to move a little bit up somewhere here. Let's go back to viewfinder VR and we can see that the moon is perfectly here. And if you observe here, we can input our focal length. I have a 300 millimeter telephoto lens, so let's enter 300. And we can see that for my lens, this is how my composition will look like. We have both towers, the moon between towers, the composition looks perfect. It is going to be an epic photo, right? But actually, wait a minute. What if there is something on the way in the terrain that is obstructing the view, like a building, a tree or something like this? Is there a way to check it? Yes, it is. We can go to street view. And we can see that actually there are a bunch of trees obstructing our view. So we cannot take this picture from this position. All right, so let's actually try to do it on a previous day because the azimuth of the moonrise will be different. So maybe we'll be able to take the photo from a slightly different position with no trees obstructing our view. Let's move back the timeline. And somewhere here, we actually need to move down Okay, let's check viewfinder VR. Let's zoom out. And we see that the moon is passing on the left. So we have to readjust. Let's go down somewhere here. The phone actually vibrates when you cross this line. So I know when the phone vibrates, I know that the moon is actually perfectly aligned with the center of my field of view. So I can just go to the VR viewfinder again now. And we can see again, let's go to 300 millimeter. We have a pretty good composition. And if we go back and we go to street view, we can see that there is nothing obstructing our view. And I can actually zoom in on the street view here and see in real life how my composition looks like. This is pretty amazing. 
Actually, I have a vlog on my YouTube channel when I went out to shoot a pretty epic moon set when the moon was aligned with an airplane taking off. The image looks like this. Pretty amazing, right? So if you want to check it out, you can click on the card right here. And of course, you can do the same thing with the sun. And actually, I use this exact method to plan this epic shot. This is a sunrise, by the way. And I also have a vlog from this morning. So if you want to check it out, link is again right here. And also, I'll put links to every of those videos I'm referring to down in the description of this video. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is actually planning your Milky Way shot. So let's actually reset our view. We can go to new. I don't want to save the plan. Okay. So we are reset here. And now if we scroll, we can see that this green stuff appears here. And this green stuff is the Milky Way. And if we change our ephemeris functions into Milky Way center, what we can actually do is open the AR viewfinder and in the AR viewfinder, you can actually overlay the Milky Way with the stuff that your camera sees. And you can perfectly frame your shot. We can see how the Milky Way is moving around. This is pretty amazing, right? Of course, you can use VR viewfinder and you can also load up a previously taken photograph into this AR kind of preview. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this app. And the best thing, maybe not the best thing, but one of the coolest thing is that you can actually save your plan. So when I have my plan, perfectly how I want it, I can actually go to this menu here, save, save the plan and then reuse it afterwards. So the app basically allows me to plan unlimited amount of photographs. I can plan ahead the entire year if I want so. And then I can load them up when I need them and it's all contained in your phone. This is amazing for me. By the way, if you are into Milky Way photography, I can highly recommend my video on how to remove light pollution in your Milky Way shot. So I'm going to put a link to it right on the card here and also in the description of this video. I can highly recommend it. So as you can see, this app is packed with some amazing functionalities and we just barely scratched the surface. And like I said, I will put in the description of this video a link to the YouTube channel of Planet, which has a lot of in-depth tutorials so you can learn more if you're interested into this. Also, if you have any experience with shooting such compositions, leave a comment down below to your Instagram profile or wherever I can see your images. I can provide you some feedback or maybe I can learn something from you. I would love to hear from you. All right, that's basically it. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button down below. It really makes a difference. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more videos like this. And I also make travel videos, vlogs, photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, drone flying tutorials. So if you're interested in any of that, you know what to do. I upload new content every single week. But that's it for now. See you next time. Have a good day. Bye bye.